SOG Spec Ops Global. Spec Ops Global is a really unique subscription box service. Uh, one of the things that they do is bring items from all over the world, different military and police units, and these are items that have been tested, that have been used. These aren't just cheap trinkets. These are mil-spec type items from, again, around the world. First time I did a box opening was about 10 months ago for Spec Ops Global, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of views, and about six months ago I did another one just haphazardly. but. One of the things about these guys is they just carry a lot of really unique stuff. And so, if nothing else, I think it's really great to see what other military and police units are using out in the field. So today we're going to take a look at the May 2017 box. Guys, I'll tell you, I've looked at the reviews on these guys and they're just top notch. This box was left out in the rain last night. So this box is not typical. The one I was holding earlier was an, another box. These boxes, by the way, are really nice. So we're going to go ahead, just want to give you a heads up on that. Now, the first thing you get is a card uh, with each of the different tiers and what comes with them. Uh, also, a really nice thank you card. Uh, one of the things I want to say, too, up front is this is a veteran-owned company. Tim, that heads Spec Ops Global, uh, searches high and low, far and wide for all these different things. So, it's just a lot of cool stuff. You know, we're going to check them out. Now, we start out with the JROTC. That is their first basic subscription. Uh, it starts out at $24.99. And we're going to look at each of those items first. So right out of the gate, we have a knife. Uh, this is from Spain. Uh, this is a Nito knife. It's a uh, really looks like a set me bayonet. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you one thing. This little sheath, and I want to mention this up front because when I first saw this sheath, I thought this looks horrible. It looks cheap, uh, but once you feel it, it is a really heavy canvas material, uh, and it is camouflaged. So while it looks you know, a little bit like it's something you'd find in a budget knife shop. Uh, this is a pretty cool little sheath with a little snap. It's a five and a half inch blade. It's nine and a half inches in total length. It's 420 stainless steel. The blade is considered a buoy design. It has a gut hook. It has a saw along the top. The handle is some kind of hard polymer material. Um, actually pretty comfortable. It's very small though in the hand. I mean it is small. Still has this little guard right here. These are not super expensive but something you could carry on a camping trip or while you're hiking uh, that you wouldn't really be afraid to get lost in the woods or uh, to really beat up. And it's one of the things I like. It's still a pretty decent little knife. And we have our little Spanish Bowie knife. My little mamacita. Not bad card stock. Sitting super, super sharp, but not bad. Not for a little budget knife. I'd like that saw to be a little longer, but we can still get the job done. Good hook. Anybody want to volunteer? <laughs> Get your feathering for starting fire, sharpening. Of course, it fits right onto your belt loop. No big deal. One thing I did find a little odd is that this is for left hand. <laughs> and uh, it goes only one way. But, you know, some people carry their knives on this hand, especially if you have a gun or a rifle in this hand. This is British military camouflage cream. Uh, this is a chameleon and it's bushcraft brand. Here you can see the Union Jack, open it up, and you have three different earth tones, which these are typical British colors, military colors. Your OD, your earth, and then your dark brown. With a mirror that you can see to apply, but also uh, for signaling. And the face paint works. And then from Switzerland, we have a waterproof bag. Uh, this is a pretty large bag, great for maybe a backpack. 
And then here we have a place to put a name tag. You can kind of slip it in. There's a mesh net right here, uh, which is sewn into the bag. Uh, it's really cool. It has drawstring right here. And again, it is waterproof. So you can pack different things in here, clothes, stuff like that. I, this is a really cool bag, very well made. Of course, this is used by the Swiss military. This is about, about half the size of a regular military duffel bag. This is great if the ground's wet, which we've had some rain for the past few days. Got your drawstring, nice metal grommets. Open it up and there is an external flap or an internal flap that you can put over all your gear and then once you close it up, it gives it added protection. And of course, the waterproof material inside. Or you could be at camp and the rain is coming down and you want to throw your backpack in there. And it fits, plus room to go. And you want to identify your bag, take your name taper, slide it right in, there you go. So you get all three of these items with the JROTC. Next from Poland, we have one of the SAG company, and this is a SEER pouch, which stands for Survive, Evade, Resist, and Escape. Uh, and this gives you a little pouch to be able to do, have your gear in here for that purpose. Um, it has Molly attachments or PALS attachments on either side. Uh, it has elastic that actually compresses the pack. Uh, it has a flap over the top, which makes it really nice, keeps it protected. And then we have um, our Duraflex type buckle. Uh, this is, of course, fully adjustable to, according to what you have in the bag. Uh, there's also a collar that comes out, and this is going to keep the items somewhat waterproof. And then there is a lining, a material inside that's definitely waterproof. So uh, this is a great little pouch to be able to stock things away. And SAG does a lot of work with the Polish military. So this is a Polish bag. Of course, you've got your molly straps on the back, and you can even use this for a belt loop. Cool little bag. Very well made. The stitching is just fantastic. Here we have the sheer pouch with a lot of gear in it. Nothing really set up, but just to show you how it fills out. Uh, the elastic webbing definitely makes a difference. I mean, it you have to really cinch it down in there. It's going to hold it tight. That way, if your bag comes open, things aren't going to come flying out. Plus, you have this collar. So this is going to actually add to some security, plus keep things dry. The adjustment is attached to the bag, so it doesn't go too far. You just pull the string and then you can open it up. Opens up wider than the pouch itself. Um, of course, a lot of different items we can put in here. Even a pair of socks. And actually, one thing that I first thought about was just a water bottle holder, which you wouldn't have to tighten up the collar stuff a water bottle in there. This is one of the big clean canteens. Uh, one thing that's really cool about this, I did a survival kit in this and one of the things that a lot of people said was you don't have a container to put the stuff in if you wanted to put water in it. And that's definitely true. So this gives you the container. <laughs> Works pretty good. And of course another use that I thought about was, and this isn't if you want to get to it quickly, but you can throw in your CZ Scorpion magazines, <laughs> especially these Manticore magazines with the steel feed lips. So now you don't have to worry about bumping them on the ground right here to break those feed lips. Of course, if you're going to keep your kit hands free, you can slide it just right onto your belt. And of course, I can put it on my backpack. Molly attachments right on, ready to go, Rush 24, thumbs up. Or you're really bored and your football's flat. <laughs> And so for the new recruit bag, you get all four of these items. The one thing that Spec Ops Global always does is add something from the U.S. And this is an aircrew bag. This is actually, and there's a label right here, it's tacticalnotebookcovers.com. They make really good quality bags, a lot of specialized bags for U.S. military, police, and airmen, and a lot of other different things. Uh, this is a pretty decent sized bag. It does expand out. But uh, looking at the back, you have a slip-in pouch right here. You have a webbing shoulder strap on the top we have a grab handle this is elastic and then it's velcroed right here so that's a pretty cool setup and then we have a hook and loop field right here to be able to put different things just open this up um, then we have webbing for each one you could actually carry it with the two loops then you can see the inside of the bag it is a waterproof meshing material 
deep inside we have an open pouch here and then we have another big pocket so there's a lot of gear that you can really put in here and this was made specifically uh, as a survival bag where you can put important papers and things in here and then put a survival kit in here for you know airmen that are on the ground of course we have the airman survival bag and you have this strap it's not adjustable which you know i would like to see that maybe to be able to use as a shoulder strap then you have your elastic strap with the velcro got a place here for a water bottle on the other side got a couple of ar magazines and i've even got one of my deca pouches here from magpul of course a very large hook and loop field i got this little small patch from shootsteel.com good solid velcro of course all the contents inside got a bandana We've got one of the SOL emergency space blankets, some gloves, lifeboat food, EDC essentials kit, some lifeboat matches. We have our low snag, Coyote tactical, and this is an IFAC. And that's just in the main compartment. Of course, back here at the back, have a little notepad, have one of the Renovo Trio water filters, one of the little Maxpedition pocket knives. Still, that's a really solid square pack. I mean, that will fit a lot of gear. And then on the front, pen, and a little right in the rain notepad. And so you get all of these items in the Season on Com tier. The Airman's Bag, the Nido Knife from Spain, British Military Camouflage Cream. You also get the uh, Sear Pouch from Poland, and from Switzerland, you get the Waterproof Bag. And next from Mother Russia, we get the Kislar Supreme, and this is the Delta. This is a really high quality knife. Now there are gonna be some variations in the tool steel for these knives. Uh, this one in particular is D2 steel. Uh, it's a tool steel. This is really super strong, very good quality. Some will be maybe OS 8 and some will be 440C stainless. Uh, the price varies. Uh, typically the price for this alone is $149. And that was on Knife Center. For the OS 8, I think it was $124. And then for the uh, 440C, it was about the same, maybe a little bit less. But still, around that $130 range. I mean, the package for the Elite is only $149.95. So the knife alone is going to cover uh, that price. It's a 6 inch blade, it's 11.1 .1 inches overall. Uh, it does come with this orange or black handle. And this is a Craton handle not quite as hard it almost has a not a salt feel to it but it just has a really good comfortable feel to it uh, the way it fits in your hand the guard right here a little bit of a harpoon style but just an excellent full tang knife um, and just good quality i mean you can tell the quality from this uh, this is used by the russian military in a lot of areas um, and of course elite police units the Rockwell hardness on this thing is 60 to 63 Rockwell hardness, so pretty stout. So our sharpness. Smooth like butter. So while I'm not going to go through a full-blown knife review, we'll use some of this hardwood just to demonstrate a little bit. I like this flat surface right here in front of the jimping. Jimping allows you to get here, but you can put your thumb, be able to really get some solid feathering. Even in this really hard wood. I mean, this wood is definitely solid. Now I'll be the first to tell you that this knife was designed as a combat knife. This is not really a great field knife because it's thin. You know, you need a little more belly on it to be able to do some things, but we're just gonna, since most of us aren't gonna be in combat, let's check it out. It can do it, but you don't want to do it. <laughs> but in a pinch, definitely great to have. And obviously, no knife review is done until you baton. Whew, that's a long piece of wood, but it'll do it. And as far as the finish goes, you've got your high spots. Obviously where the woods was sliding through, 
but the finish remains intact. I just cleaned it off with a little WD-40 and uh, ready to rock. But these two steels gonna hold up whether the finish does or not. Delta sheath goes well on the bag, on the molly. It's got a good solid feel to it. Very well balanced. And obviously on your belt loop, unstring this, tie it around your leg and you got a good tie down. Yeah, I like that. I kind of wish it was in black. I like the black a little better, but if you drop this one, you can find it. And in the Elite package, you get all the other items as well. From Russia, we get the Delta knife. From the US, we get the Airman survival bag. Uh, from the UK, we get face cream or camouflage cream. From Spain, we get the small buoy knife. And then from Poland, we get the sear bag. And I almost forgot, from Switzerland, we get the waterproof bag. Guys, I didn't do a review on the April box. In fact, Tim sent it because he said this really coincides with the May box. Uh, this is a Russian load-bearing vest, part of the Elite. This is a Russian-made belt. It has the uh, same digital camouflage. Uh, it's a belt sleeve. And there's a really cool belt. This belt actually comes from Poland. It has the plastic Cobra buckle, good solid webbing. We have some straps. These are also from Poland. And this really thin mag pouch, it's a kind of an elastic mag pouch. I've got a USGI mag in there, which is not included. And then we have a small little pouch that's from the Ukraine. Uh, this is a pretty cool pouch. In fact, it's really funny. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Maxpedition EDC, one of the fat boys. Uh, it's got a lot of hook and loop, zippers, everything. So uh, this is a really cool pouch. And then we have a couple of clash hooks, and this is from the USA. And again, they always like to throw something in from the USA, which makes it nice. Uh, you can use that with the straps. You can use it for a lot of things. Anyway, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to get that you just really can't find anywhere else. And uh, all new gear. You can also go to the website and buy a lot of this stuff on standalone while supplies last. Now, of course, you can go to specopsglobal.com, check out all the different uh, tier packages that they do. Uh, you, I will have a link down in the description. Click on that. If you do subscribe to their box, they're gonna give you a free piece of gear, which I think is really cool. And I wanna thank Spec Ops Global for sending the box uh, for this review. It just really is cool to bring a lot of stuff to you guys that you're just not gonna see every day. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Now for the Elite Spec Glops, okay, Spec Glops. We're gonna go for the Spec Glops go Gobel. This is a sear pouch which stands for survive, evade, reject, reject, <laughs> reject. <laughs> I reject survival. Boo. It's $24.95. Where's my card? Bang! Of course, now I gotta take my belt all the way off to get to the loop. Uh, with a mirror which can also be used for si hey you can see my camera <laughs> next for the elite package this is the Kizlyar Kiz Kiz now one of the things Tim mentioned is that some of these will come as D2 tool steel some will come as OS 8 um, and what else SOG Spec Ops Global 